Hi all, I have another very interesting game to show you between one of the latest Leela networks, 61056, against the mighty Stockfish 10. It's a fast and furious time control, one minute with one second increment. So DCAP has provided me with some very interesting games exploring some key opening variations. And let's have a look today. The opening variation being explored is actually the Halloween Gambit. So Knight takes E5. So can Leela fend off the potential onslaught here of white compensation. Knight takes e5 is the end of the book. So now Stockfish chooses d4, knight g6, e5. The knight goes back to g8, bishop c4. So it looks like white has potentially some interesting compensation here. What would be a key defensive move? In fact, this ID of the leader network chooses a move uh, c6. So this seems maybe a little bit passive, but one of the ideas is to try and discourage white to keep that spearheaded pawn. If the pawn can be taken, uh, taking on d6, then bish this bishop can be potentially challenged as well with bishop e6 later. That would take out uh, quite a significant part of white's attacking formation. Uh, and this idea of c6 has been mentioned by a very strong United States national master, John Chernoff, who you may know as Zug Addict. He recommends this in the free course at Chessable there, King's Crusher TV slash Halloween, if you want to check that out. So some free trainable variations for the uh, greed is good defense, he's called it. So C6, we have Queen E2. Uh, one critical idea, if, if Queen F3, you can play D5 after E takes, renewing Queen takes F7 as a threat, Bishop E6, and here, actually, d5, although tempting, creates a weakness of the last move. It neglects e5, and black can pounce on that with knight e5. Take on c4, and this is actually wonderful for black, even if there's a discovered check. It's only a small inconvenience, and black is doing really well here. So uh, queen e2 was chosen, not queen f3. So this obviously tries to dissuade d5. In fact, Leela plays bishop b4 now, and this bishop is potentially a tactical liability. It is a loose piece. And there are forcing moves available to white to celebrate that, like bishop takes and queen c4 potentially, hitting the bishop with check. White, for the moment, though, just castles. Uh, if bishop takes, let's have a quick look at this here, with d5, ed, bishop e6, queen takes, queen b6, and black seems to be fine here, actually. There's nothing too much to worry about. So uh, white castled, we have knight 8 to e7. And now, instead of letting black castle, we have now bishop takes f7 check. Uh, if f4, in fact, black has a very nice move, knight f5 before castling, putting pressure on d4 immediately. And if d5, this can run into bishop c5 check, and here, queen h4 with the big threat of knight g3 checkmate. So this is actually turning the tables quite significantly for who has the attack. This position, for example, black's doing absolutely brilliantly. Even rookie 8 is possible uh, just to get rid of some of the attacking pieces and take on d6 with a big advantage to black. So that kind of stuff is really amazing. If we look instead, instead of d5, g4, then just knight takes... Any, any bishop takes f7, there's always d5. And whatever white plays here, e takes, discover check, or taking on b4 or d4, it seems as though black's doing really well. This threatens immediately bishop c5, for example. If queen takes b4, then there's knight takes c2. That's a disaster for white. If e takes d6, discover check, then there's king e8, actually. And... You know, if queen takes d4, there was queen b6 pinning the queen. And if this, again, queen b6 is strong, the queen's coming off, it's harmless for black. So uh, very, very interesting. So we have, uh, in fact, bishop takes f7 check, not letting uh, the possibility of, of black castling here. King takes, queen c4 check. And now the key move, knight d5. Very, very interesting. Knight takes, c takes. Queen takes b4. Uh, here, if queen takes d5 in this position, king e8, this position, black should be fine. Uh, so, 
you can see a common thing is sometimes this bishop is hemmed in and f5 could be a useful square for black as a blockading square. Uh, so we have uh, queen takes b4, queen b6, queen c3, rook f8. And this invites white to take yet another pawn. Check, queen takes d5, check, queen e6. And here it's very, very interesting. So a number of pawns have been lost for the one knight, but it's opposite color bishops. So who's evaluated this better? Queen takes e6 was played. If the queen goes to e4, d5 using that pinned pawn. And this is nice for rook f7. There's a very nice blockade here. And again, this dark square bishop doesn't seem that comfortable in this pawn chain. Black is in the driving seat there, it seems. So queen takes, d takes, and now c4. But here is a brilliant positional move from Leela. Uh, and what would you play if I give you five seconds to pause the video here? So black to play here. So you're already quite a number of pawns down. Uh, white has all the pawns, all eight pawns in fact, and you're down to five. So you're three pawns for the knight. It is opposite colored bishops. So what would you do in this particular scenario? Okay, give up another pawn, b5. Try and establish a light square blockade. Emphasize the power of this bishop as a blockader, a, blo a blockader and a container for white's position. We have c takes. If b3, in fact, b takes, b takes is a target to bishop a6. And that's going to be winning that pawn with a huge blockade on d5. So uh, it's uncomfortable. c takes is played. And here, a6. We have b6 being played. If b takes, bishop takes a6, the rook moves, bishop b7. Again, it's actually... Uh, quality over quantity scenario even though it's only three pawns this the bishop coming to d5 there's potential for knight h4 as well looking at g2 sometimes uh, black has a really nice position there despite being four pawns down so in fact uh, we have b6 rook b8 b3 rook takes b6 bishop a3 rook f7 rook fc1 bishop b7 f3 now knight f4, so yeah, there's a big threat of knight e2 check here. We see rook c4, g5, h3, bishop d5. Black is getting a nice blockade position. After king g7, bishop c5, rook b8, bishop d6, rook a8, a, uh, b4, h5, king h2, king g6. So putting things on light squares away from this bishop. Rook f2, rook c8. Yes, this seems very pleasant for black. Bishop c5, knight d3, rook d2, and not minding just the bishop against loads of pawns. Knight takes c5. Getting this b file means a pair of rooks can be traded off now. After the rooks double, we have rook b2. Getting a pair of rooks off, and here, yeah, White's, okay, got this past pawn for the moment, but it's blockaded uh, explicitly with bishop c6 now. hg, king takes, rook c3, a5, rook b3, we have not letting white have any counterplay potential, just taking off that rook, a takes, bishop d5. So can white hold this with all the extra pawns? One issue after king f2, if black snaps immediately, then c6 is a little bit dangerous, potentially. In fact, uh, Lula doesn't take on b3. So taking on b3, c6, you'd have to get back for this pawn. Uh, and, you know, maybe uh, d d5 is insufficient here anyway. So that looks absolutely winning anyway. But it wasn't even played. It looks absolutely winning, that position. So just taking on b3 is is fine. Um, but actually, h4 was played. King e2. King f4. And it's a zugzwang here anyway. This, this actually makes it even more pleasant. The game actually, after bishop c6, king e2, was ended here. It wasn't actually played out even uh, from this position. 
uh, it was adjudicated here as a win for black. So if the game had continued, uh, I was just showing a Zugs man, King G3, um, the bishop eventually taking on B3 is, is absolutely best play. And any D5, we can actually just mate the white king now, even if black queens is checkmate there. So yeah, uh, so I'll take you to the game end position. King E2 and yeah, adjudicated as a win for black. So what was interesting about this game is that this neural network came up with a human researched suggestion, C6, which is really intriguing. Uh, so I, I'm starting to think uh, that these latest 60 networks might be very handy for discovering new opening theory or validating certain opening ideas. So very, very interesting from a theoretical point of view. If you want to train on some variations uh, in this variation, actually, in this particular variation with that C6 move, check out the King's Crusher TV slash Halloween link. And yeah, there's a number of exercises on that variation. Uh, so that's, if we go back to this C6 move, it's an intriguing move. It's got great potential, it seems. And this is an amazing example, I thought, of it at work against the mighty Stockfish 10. Okay, thanks very much.